You are getting 100% Jody on women taking the lead. We are wired to need to understand, to have the answer to questions that float through our mind. If we do not seek the truth, we will make stuff up to have an answer, even if it is incorrect. This causes so much suffering. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentakingthelead.com to join the community and get the resources to support you on your leadership journey. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me. As of the date this episode was released, it is Thanksgiving Day here in the U.S. It's always a good time to be thankful for all the blessings in our lives. It's too easy to focus on what's missing and what's not going right, and that creates a very unpleasant experience. Taking the time to reflect on what we have and what's going right creates a peaceful and grateful state of mind that can help us to stay calm and in action. If you have not yet added a gratitude practice in your daily routine, I'm going to highly recommend it. One thing I am incredibly grateful for this week is all the changes that have been happening to my website. More changes are going to roll out over time, but for now, womentakingthelead.com definitely has a new look and feel to it. I would love for you to check it out and let me know what you think. Many of the best ideas for my business, including the website, the podcast, and the services I provide have come from my clients and community. Sometimes we're too close to something to see the obvious, so I am grateful for any feedback I can get, be it positive, negative, or neutral. I am looking forward to hearing from you. This episode is the fourth and last episode in a series based on one of the most impactful books I've ever read, The Four Agreements, and an event that I attended in Portland, Maine. The speakers at the event I attended were Don Miguel Ruiz Sr., who is the author of The Four Agreements, and his sons, Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. and Don Jose Ruiz. In this series, I'm sharing with you the notes I took that evening and some of my thoughts around the material, and I also have to give a thank you to my friend who was also at the event because we had to do some note comparing when it came to this final episode. Don Jose Ruiz, who led this part of the evening, had a much different speaking style. Um, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. He was definitely engaging and impactful, but his thoughts and the material he was conveying was more like a stream of consciousness rather than an organized bullet point list. So our notes were all over the page, but we've cobbled together something that completely makes sense. So I'm sharing with you the notes that I took and my friend took and some of the thoughts we had around the material. And the the agreements I covered in the first three episodes were be impeccable with your word, Always do your best and don't take anything personally. I've introduced each agreement in the order in which they were presented at the event. There was one agreement left as Don Jose Ruiz came to the stage. Don't make assumptions. And again, a twist on how to apply this agreement to your life was presented. From the book, The Four Agreements, the guidance for don't make assumptions reads, find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. When I read the four agreements 20 years ago, I read this agreement as relating mostly to not making assumptions about other people. However, Don Jose Ruiz focused mostly on not making assumptions about yourself. And I went back to the book to see if this was a completely new twist and discovered that it wasn't. So here are the notes that I and my friend cobbled together. Be open to avoid making assumptions. Open your heart. Remember who you are. You are a temple of love. You can overcome anything, including yourself. You are here to love unconditionally and that includes you. 
If you are not happy with yourself, how can you be happy with another? You are the love of your own life. Love yourself so you can love another. Be skeptical of the negativity you direct at yourself, that you are not perfect, that you are not enough, and that you cannot change. Respect and love yourself. What do you love about your temple? We assume people see things the way we do, and so when they do not say and do what we think they should be saying and doing, we assume it's for a negative reason. This is why we struggle with being ourselves. We are such a harsh critic of ourselves, we assume if others knew the real us, they would judge us as harshly as we judge ourselves. In this way, we project our view of the world onto others, thus completely misunderstanding the other person, and we internally or externally, and probably both, attack the other person for intentions and thoughts that they do not have. To stop this vicious cycle, we have to one, change the way we treat ourselves. Again, you are the love of your own life. Love yourself so you can love others. And two, ask other people what their view is, what their intentions are, what their thoughts are. We are wired to need to understand, to have the answer to questions that float through our mind. If we do not seek the truth, we will make stuff up to have an answer, even if it is incorrect. This causes so much suffering. This is why with the one agreement to don't make assumptions, you can completely transform your life. Can you imagine how this one agreement could change who you are as a leader and a business owner? By not making assumptions, you are less likely to take things personally or be hurt by others' words or actions. Making assumptions is the breeding ground for taking things personally. It's a one-two punch. Take some time today to imagine what life would be like if you were no longer emotionally derailed by what other people do. If rather than needing to expend energy on managing your emotions, you could calmly and directly ask questions to get to the heart of the situation. How much more could you accomplish in a day, a week, or a year if that was the case? It will blow your mind if you take some time to think about it. And if this is something you struggle with, reach out to me. This is part of the work I do with my clients. With the process I take them through, they get so much energy back that they in turn use that energy to hit their goals and to start creating even better ones. Don't go it alone if you don't have to. And before I wrap this up, I want to invite you again to go to womentakingthelead.com to take a look around at the site and give me your feedback. And you can reach me at jody at womentakingthelead.com or message me on any social media platform. I'm eager to hear what you think and I don't take anything personally. It's all valuable information for me. And I just want to put it out there. If you want to reach out to me for any reason, please do so. I'm at Jodi, J-O-D-I, at womentakingthelead.com, and I am looking forward to hearing from you. As always, I hope this was of value to you, and here's to your success. Thank you all for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. And to strengthen you on your own leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson, so here goes. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. 
Again, thank you for joining me and here's to your success.